be able to be in this right now is really a bucket list item I did not know I had. I had so many people tweeting at me that were like, pigtails, right? And so I was like, we have to do pigtails because people that like speaks to them. Yeah. <laughs> pigtails say Natalie, so you know. I feel like Tootie. Yeah. I feel like Tootie. The whole thing is surreal. And then there's Norman Lear. Mr. Lear comes in to join us for the read through. Uh, Mr. Lear, would you like to say something? It took me 99 years to get to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was worth every split second of it. <laughs> Bless you all. I love seeing you. I love what's happening here. He's a TV legend, you know, so working in this type of atmosphere with people that understand it, it's always fun. And looking for the heart and the comedy, an episode like this is a must. And to be able to, like, go through my paces with Jim Burroughs, and when we were done, and this is going to stay with me, like, and not to get emotional, but, like, he, he takes a step back and he thinks for a second, and he goes, you're going to need cue cards, aren't you? <laughs> yep, pro probably. Then I sit down and I look over and I think, okay, that's Snoop Dogg. He's next to me. Damon Wayans is right here. And then there's Kevin Hart. And then there's John Lithgow. And I'm in this somehow. How did this happen? Recreating it, it's like, it's like doing a revival of a 400-year-old Shakespeare play, but one of the comedies. I mean, we were walking around the stages looking at the Facts of Life set and the different strokes set, and it just took me right back to my youth. You know, as a young guy, I used to watch these shows and used to have such a love for the people that play these, uh, these characters. So it's kind of dope now for it to come full circle. It is so accurate, and you just, you know, you start playing episodes in your head, you know? Hey, <laughs> Yeah, it's weird going back and playing a guy who's supposed to be, I guess, in high school. Um, not weird for me, I can do it, but being, seeing Bateman, because he looks so old, um, it's, that's where I think a lot of the comedy is, is how old Jason Bateman is. Dick, let's do it. Take longer. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the audience they left, they not care. It's a special moment. Fighting <laughs> change. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Will Arnett. He's been after me for years, and I just keep, uh, you know, winning with love and smiles. That's going to thaw him out one of these days. He's just got to work through a bunch of stuff. Everything you think about Snoop is true. It's like the master of cool, you know, and swaggadocious. A picture from Bernie is worth a thousand words. <laughs> and he has a little weed problem. That little spin and exit is just out of me being a moron and um, trying to show off my singular <laughs> dance move. And I'm, I'm lending it here with no price bump whatsoever to this Facts of Life show. Well, I love carrying him across the stage. I astonished everybody, including my uh, sciatic nerves. <laughs> Jimmy's producing this. Yes. <sighs> That's amazing. If there is a kinder, smarter, funnier human being, I've not met that person. That is what I have to say about Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel is not a good producer or person. Um, and so there's a lot of the big thing on set is where do we keep our valuables? We're donating all of our salaries to, to the, the Jimmy Kimmel Family Foundation, which is a different thing. We're happy to see him uh, getting his head above water. It's been, it's been a tough road for him these last couple of years. I mean, look at him. He's struggling. It's, it's, it's sixth time he's gotten COVID in the last two weeks. <laughs> Fifth time in the last two weeks cases. he's gotten COVID. And I don't care, because I love him. I'll just be this close to him. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He's got three masks underneath that black one. It still seems to burn through, though. Thank you for doing it. Look at that. Now I gotta go boil the shoulder. <laughs> Can't do old school sitcom uh, acting without some physicality. For example, getting in the bunk bed and rolling, making noises and grunting, <laughs> showing that you're not as limber as you once were. It's funny. I don't know that I've ever done a multicam show. I think this might be the only one. Oh no! <clears throat> Years ago, I was in a, a little show called The Nanny. I was the hot doctor. Take me. Who <laughs> turned out to be your cousin. Cousin Sam's. <laughs> that was the, that was the twist. 
The great thing about like 70s and 80s sitcoms is they had catchphrases. What you talking about, Willis? I mean, TV back then was all about punching the word, punching the punchline. You don't have a water bed. We will when you get in the bathtub and I turn on the faucet. <laughs> and the theme songs were so amazing because you'd hear them in another room and you knew your show was on. We got different strokes to the, different strokes to the room. <laughs> yeah, I know it. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both and there you have the facts of life. The facts of life. And then the second verse is like, bleedy, bleedy, bout and something, in, and then you learn about, it's complete, uh, co I utter nonsense to me. Oh, the good, uh, you take the good, you take the bad. Uh, f it all, it makes me sad. I, f it all might not be in there. It takes a lot to get them right when you're learning the facts of, learning the facts of, learning the facts of life. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.